Hello. I'm just out here tinkering with this stuff. Off camera, I've been... I haven't had much time to get out here and record. Everything's been beyond chaotic. So every few minutes I get to work on this stuff. I just do it off camera so I can get something done. What I ended up doing is I had a piece of angle iron very similar to this one here. And what I did is I just drilled a big hole for that pipe to sit in on the other side of the heads column and just used a rotary burr to open it up and then just cut it like that and put two slots in the back side of it cut it down what I ended up with is let me move you here What I ended up with is a motor on it. It does run. It runs pretty good. It's pretty well balanced. I just have it held down with C-clamps right now. This is what I got. The thing did not want to start because the spindle is cold, so I took a torch and just heated it to get rid of the chill. Just barely above room temperature now. Or just barely at room temperature. When I put this thing together, the or when I start running it, the bearings sounded really rough. Yeah, the bearings sounded really dry. So what I did is I peeled the covers off of the inside of it, so I get oil into them. Drilled and tapped an eighth-inch pipe thread. Just put a compression fitting here. Put a ball bearing in the top to seal it up. I think it actually looks pretty good that way. And then I put some oil into it. I made a spacer to go between the pulley and the bearing with a spring washer in between to preload the bearings. Since I am using um, radial thrust bearings. But as you see it runs pretty good. Just has to have a few minutes of warm up to before it runs. Otherwise the bearings here are kind of stiff. Anyways, what I've got to do now is I need to find some way to attach the wheels. i got to find some way to attach the wheels into the thing. And I don't have any threaded rod just to get by to sharpen it. So this time I want to make a draw bar to go in the back of this thing all the way through. And then we'll be able to sharpen some tools up because everything I have is dull pretty much. Alright, let's go check a piece of steel up in the lathe and let's get started. I also got a letter from Craig over at Craig's Workshop. If you don't know his channel, definitely go check him out. He's, I've been talking back and forth with him for quite a while. But I already put up his sticker right here, right on top. And it sent me an extra one. My fingers were all dirty when I was handling this one, so. Thank you, Craig, for that. Yeah, definitely go check out his channel. Right now he's installing a DRO on his mill, but he's always working on something or another. Yeah, definitely go check his channel out. I'll put a link down in the description.
I got it turned down. It's seven inches long. It's three quarter inch diameter right now. Maybe a thou or two over, but it's kind of warm, so. Not leaving too bad of a finish. Okay, I got the draw bar cut off. I just took a file and cleaned the burr off. I just tightened it in with a wrench because I need to sharpen some tools. So, let's give it a test. Set you over here, out of the way. I don't have dust collection, so one of the rarest things in this world right now. This is the one I use for metal casting. That thing worked pretty well, actually. I didn't have any luck with this tool or that wheel before on the old grinder, so I didn't use it. I just wasn't. It was really. All it did was just burnish it rather than remove any material, so I thought it was kind of a junk wheel. It works pretty good on this grinder, that's for sure. It's got a little bit of wobble to it. I don't know if it's in the arbor or if it's in the wheel or what's going on. It was a cheapy cheapy. 
one. Just stick in another wheel and see how it fits or how everything goes. Okay. This is the one I'll be using most of the time for sharpening animals and stuff. Nicely. I'm not seeing any movement here. Yeah, that one runs nice. And this is the one I'll be using a lot of the time for roughing up carbide. This is a table saw sharpening blade from Harbor Freight. It looks like it's a little off center, but it honestly did that on the other grinder too. There isn't much of side to side, so that's all that matters really. The grinding spindle and everything works pretty good now. Now I gotta take it all back apart, cut some flats on this so I can get it undone without needing it. Uh, pliers. Probably make it up so it fits on this one here. Face this off real quick. Well, here's one of the freshly ground tools. See how much of a difference it makes compared to before. Face it off to a more manageable length. It looks good. There's the drill bar. Besides the flats that have to be built on it. 
Okay, I just set up the drill press vise here. I had much longer than I could use for the R8 clamping nut. So what I did is I just put a this is a 19 millimeter socket on back with a washer here, washer here, tighten the whole thing up using the draw bar itself. So make sure everything's tight. side of the jaw here. Yeah, it hold this thing. I just 
stuck it through the R8 collet and put a washer, a big one on the back, and then a 19 millimeter socket right here tacked as a spacer. Washer, tighten the whole thing up, it sucked everything tight. So I can use it for longer materials. You just have to be creative with it. One of these days I'm going to get a real vice for this thing. Deburr that with a file real quick. We'll be done. Okay, there's the troll bar. And I wanted to use this side here. You can see it's a nice fit because it's also the same size that all the other nuts on here use, so I can use the same wrench for everything. Had a piece of copper there, but there's the drill bar. Now I gotta work on the rails and stuff here, but I don't have any steel to do it, so I'll have to make some. Yeah, you can see the draw bar here. I did it this way rather than just wadding a nut on because this is a lot more balanced. Now, now I can touch up all my tools and stuff I have just freehand until I can get the next part done. Well, I put the motor on it from the old carbide grinder. It ran in the wrong direction, but I just took the thing apart. There was four little studs in there or four wires come into the rotor. I just flipped the two that was next to each other and it reversed the direction. Protect it against the carbide dust. I don't have the dust collection yet for this made so I gotta use a respirator till then. Sharp carbide. I'll make better studs, clamping stuff, hardware for this coming up. But we are grinding carbide, grinding tool bits with this thing. Okay, we got the articulating setup all done. We got the grinding head done. We got everything running. 
yeah. Now all that's left to do is your handles on stuff, which I might do off camera. I gotta do the Z height and the top of this thing adjustment, which will be eventually. And we gotta make the two tool holders. Other than that, this thing's about done, except for the base also. And the sliding rails for the column. This will be moved over about two, two and a half inches. Because it's pretty far over here. But I think that's enough progress for right now. I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. See ya.